Grace and peace be yours in Christ, our King. Amen. We focus on those words from Matthew 27, that scene of Jesus being mocked and ridiculed on his way to the cross. In the name of Jesus, dear fellow subjects of the heavenly King, it is, it is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. I don't know if you've ever heard those words before, but they were spoken by Winston Churchill about Russia, basically saying, who can guess, who can forecast, who can predict what that government is going to do? It's a mystery wrapped in a riddle inside an enigma. In a different sense, we could say the same thing about Christ's government. It's a mystery wrapped in a riddle inside an enigma. It's kind of a paradox. There's no question that Christ reigns. He sits on the throne of heaven and earth. He reigns supreme. But his reign doesn't square with our perception of the world. It's still shrouded in mystery. It's beyond our vision. It doesn't always match with our earthly appearances because Jesus reigns through the cross. Jesus reigns through the cross. So in this section, we see Jesus ascending his throne as our shepherd king through the cross. And when we see with eyes of faith, we see that Jesus continues to reign over us through the cross. This whole scene is a mystery and a riddle and an enigma and a paradox. It, it's confusing. Who's really in charge here in this scene in Matthew 27? Who's in control of this situation? King of the Jews. But the name is a cruel joke. It takes place there outside of Jerusalem in the capital city of the Jews. But the Jews have not made Jesus their king. They have not approved him unanimously and seated him on their throne. They have rejected him, hung him out to dry. They have condemned him to death by crucifixion. So are these corrupt Jewish leaders? Are they in control of this situation? Well, their control is limited. Because the one thing they want to do to Jesus, put him to death, crucify him, they can't do. It's beyond their control. The Romans are there. Now, normally that's a bitter pill to swallow. Normally that's something painful to the Jewish leaders. But this time it's convenient. The Romans can do that dirty work of executing Jesus, this imposter guilty of blasphemy, calling himself the Son of God. The Romans, they know how to take charge of a situation. Surely they're in charge of this situation here. There's Pontius Pilate. He claimed power to give the thumbs up or the thumbs down. So don't you know I have power over you to either set you free or put you to death? And that power trickled down to his soldiers, this whole cohort of Roman soldiers and their treatment of Jesus. This wasn't just entertainment for them, a little fun, a little sport before getting along with the business. This was classic Roman intimidation, not just using military force, but also disgrace and humiliation and mockery and ridicule to show they had the power, they had the control, not their captive, not their prisoner. They knew how to show their power. So, king of the Jews, in that scene, in that moment, the only throne Jesus sat on was the hot seat as he endured mockery and ridicule and disgrace, being beaten and spat upon. The only scepter he held was an old wooden staff that they had sitting around and they put in his hand as a costume prop and ended up beating him over the head with it. The only crown Jesus wears in this scene is an arts and crafts project that this Roman cohort of soldiers came up with for their own amusement and Jesus' torment. The only robe he's wearing Majestic royal robes is this, again, a costume prop to make a mockery of him as they knelt before him and heaped abuse on him. To all appearances, 
Jesus does not seem to be very much in control of this situation at all. Not a king in any sense. If he's a king, he's the king of mockery, the emperor of shame, the ruler of ridicule, the prince of the pathetic, king of the Jews. But things are not what they seem. Those Jews and their control was limited. They were not the ones ultimately in control of this. The Roman power, for all of their might and domination, their control was limited. Remember Jesus, even in submission to Pontius Pilate, said, you would not have a lick of power if it had not been given to you from on high. Their power had limits. Jesus, despite all appearances, he himself reigned even in that situation of disgrace and humiliation. Jesus reigns from all eternity to all eternity. He was the one guiding all of this. He was submitting to his heavenly father's plan of salvation for him to take on the sin of the world, take it away by his death. He knew that plan. He was on board with that plan. He was even guiding that plan forward. He remained in complete and ultimate control of that even during his submission, even during his weakness, even when he accepted seeming powerlessness of, toward those over him. This is the paradox of salvation. This is the riddle of Christ's reign. He reigns through the cross. It was through this weakness and disgrace and humiliation and shame that Jesus was taking his throne as our shepherd king. He was submitting to those earthly authorities. He was submitting to his heavenly father, all to take on our role and become what he already was, our shepherd king. To gather, to unite, to comfort, to save, to rescue the lost sheep, not just of the Jews of Israel, but all people throughout the world. Your shepherd king offered his life on the cross to rescue you from sin and death and hell, to gather you to himself. This is the paradox of salvation and the riddle of Christ's reign. He reigns through the cross. God was spat upon so that whoever trusts in him will never be put to shame. He endured oppression so that you and I are eternally set free and have the complete approval of God through faith in him. Christ endured this weakness and humiliation in order to lift us up to join him in everlasting glory. Our shepherd king came and took his throne to rule and to reign, to unite and to gather, to comfort and protect, to save and rescue us, his dear sheep. And he came to his power, he came to his throne all through the cross. Now Jesus is no longer in this circle of bullies. He's no longer enduring abuse and being spat upon and beaten. He now sits on the throne of heaven and earth. He has risen from the dead. He has ascended to the right hand of God. He now wields and shows and exercises again all the power and glory and might that were his from the foundation of the world and even before that. He is robed in majesty, brighter than the sun. He wears the golden crown of power. He wields the iron scepter. But his reign is still a riddle. It's still a mystery wrapped in a riddle, inside an enigma, a paradox. It doesn't square with what we see and experience in the world. Jesus truly does reign, but he reigns even now, through the cross. To our earthly appearances, he doesn't, even at this point, appear to be very much in control of the situation, any more than he did when he was in that circle of soldiers. Who, in fact, is in control of the situation is the big question floating around constantly. Sometimes it seems like the individual ought to be in control that the individual ought to call their own shots and make their own choices and do what they see fit. And if you do that, then you've got it. But maybe we sin 
by taking that too far. We sin if we think and act like we have ultimate control of our own life and our own safety and our own health and our own success. That is sin, to think we have ultimate control. Then there's some that would suggest, no, the government has control. They're the ones setting the policy and making the laws and exercising control. And if they could just get a hold of things, get things under control, then, then that would be set. The government has limited control, it's true, from God. And yet it would be sin to act like the government has ultimate control. To pin all our hopes on them fixing the situation. Or to fall into despair and think we're all doomed if they don't get it right. To assume they have ultimate control is sin. And then there's the temptation to look around and think, there's no one in control. There's no one driving this. It's a big mess spinning out of control and it seems unsettling and unnerving, frightening, scary, all that. That too, on our part, could be sin. Worrying, doubting, mistrusting the rule of God. Because no matter how it seems or how it feels, the only one with ultimate control is Jesus himself. He reigns and rules over all of it. But again, his reign is a riddle. It's a mystery. He reigns through the cross. Think of how he answers our prayer. When we pray, thy kingdom come. Does Christ's kingdom come among us with trumpets and glory from heaven? Does he come among us with his royal rule and lift up his church on earth to shining heights of success and earthly power and domination? Hardly. Christ's rule comes among us. His gracious kingdom comes through the cross. No longer the action of the cross, but the message of the cross, the still small voice of the gospel that is so, so powerful to save, and yet also seems so subject to ridicule and mockery and abuse. Jesus comes and reigns and rules over us through the cross. As our shepherd king, he leads us, yes, on the way to heaven, but in the meantime, he leads us with him, following his example, in his likeness, imitating him. He leads us gently, lovingly into weakness, into humiliation, into disgrace, into shame, just like him. So we bear the cross in this world. His cross is over and done, but our cross is still in full swing. One part of our cross is accepting that we are not in control. So hard for us, but so true, and in a way so comforting. We do have some freedom and some control and some choices, and we pray that we would have the strength and wisdom to use that wisely. But there are many things that happen in our world that we can't fix and can't change and can't avoid. We simply accept. Quiet acceptance, not in resignation as if, what's the difference anyway? Or as if it's random events of the universe that's in no one's control and just happens. But we can have quiet acceptance knowing that the things out of our control are handed down to us by our gracious Savior King, our Shepherd King, who gave his life for us. And so we can submit to the gracious, eternal, supreme rule of our King Jesus and know that he has everything in his hands, even when we feel out of control and powerless. One part of our cross and our humble submission to Jesus is also submission to our earthly authorities, imperfections and all. We saw in that scene, and all the scenes surrounding that, Jesus, the Son of God, submitted to Pontius Pilate, to those Jewish leaders, even to those cruel soldiers as they gathered around him. Such a surprising thing. Even when they got it so wrong, he still submitted. He trusted his Heavenly Father that it had good at the end, our eternal and 
tremendous good. He was there out of love for us, submitting to save us. Our earthly rulers are a far cry from Pontius Pilate and the corrupt Jewish ruling council and those cruel Roman soldiers. We have so many blessings and gifts and freedoms to give thanks for. But even if God would give us earthly rulers that are just like Roman dictators and tyrants, or worse, we could still submit to them, trusting the reign of our Savior Jesus, trusting that he is over all and that to all appearances to the contrary, he controls everything. He still reigns over all of it, but he reigns through the cross. Do you see how that great truth of Christ's reign gives us peace that we don't need to look to ourselves and say, if I get this right, then I'll be okay. If I make the right choices and the right plans and decisions, no. Christ reigns supreme. Our shepherd has us in his hands. We also don't need to pin all of our hopes on the government getting things right. We pray for wisdom. We pray that God would guide them. And yet we're not going to assume or demand or expect that they're going to fix all the problems and we won't fall into despair if they get things wrong. Christ continues to reign. Christ in his royal reign holds all of it in his hands, whether it is right from an earthly perspective or they get it wrong. See how this truth allows us to do both. Allows us to submit to the earthly rulers out of love for our shepherd king. Obedience to the fourth commandment, despite all their imperfections, whether we agree or disagree. We're able to pray for those earthly rulers. We're able to cut them a break, understanding that their control is limited and they can't pull every lever and they can't fix everything. And so we can pray for them and ask the Lord Jesus in his royal rule to guide and shepherd and help and assist them despite all appearances, even when we don't see it or feel it, even when we're bearing a cross, including the cross of imperfect government and having to submit to all the difficulties of our world and having us as an earthly church always seeming to be at the bottom of things, despite all of those appearances, the truth reigns supreme. Christ reigns supreme. He continues to be king over all, as our shepherd king. Unlike what Winston Churchill said about Russia, it being hard to predict or forecast what will happen and what they will do, we know exactly what Christ will do. As our shepherd king, he will continue to reign and rule and use his almighty ultimate control over the universe for the good of his people. As the head caring for his members. He promises that he will work all things for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his loving purpose, you and me, his dear sheep. He will continue to gather and guide and comfort and protect, nourish, rescue and save his dear people, his dear sheep, and one day escort us into glory. One day we will see Christ reigning, no longer in a mystery, in a riddle, in a paradox, no longer something that's hard to see, but one day we will see it in all its glory. One day we will see him robed with the sun, in perfect majesty and power, obvious and clear beyond all doubt, King of kings and Lord of lords, and we will continue to follow him, then no longer in weakness no longer under a cross, but we will follow him into glory and eternal victory. Until then, don't be afraid. Bear the cross. Submit to his royal rule, trusting him. Submit even to the earthly authorities he has appointed, imperfections and all, bearing that cross as well. Follow your dear shepherd, your dear king. He holds you in his hands together with all the events of the world, he will lead you. He will guide you. He will reign over you, even through your cross, and bless you beyond belief. Amen.